<clears throat> Hi, and good evening. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing what we did last week, which was introducing how to draw things onto a window in Java. And to do so, we took our uh, the existing JFrame class and we extended it to make our own, and then we started throwing in uh, things like rectangles and ovals and um, uh, other shapes and, and then making simple pictures out of that. So I'm going to kind of review how to do that uh, on tonight, and um, we'll see where we go from there. So first things first is we need to we need to set up our um, hold on a sec here. All right, I just need to turn down the volume on my end. Um, so the first thing we need to do is start our JFrame class. So we go new class, and we can call this. Um, maybe picture. And then of course, the first thing we do is we take all this stuff and we get rid of it. All right, so now we're gonna go class, picture, extends, JFrame. And since we're using a JFrame, we need to, we don't have to, but we can do an import, javax.swing.jframe. And we can, press compile and just make sure that it works at this point. So now we've got a class called picture. It knows everything about being a JFrame. So it knows how to set its title, its size, its visibility, um, but it doesn't know how to draw anything on there. So let's make a procedure here called setup. And let's have it set its size. Let's do 500 by 500 and make it visible and finally give it a title. Okay, let's, let's try it out. Let's make our code pad a bit bigger. There we go. Picture P equals new picture. And we should be able to do p.setup. And there's our window. Great. <clears throat> so when we're putting simple shapes onto our JFrame, the mental model I want you to have in mind is what was called a felt board from maybe a kindergarten or first grade. It was this, it was this basically a picture frame that had a piece of felt uh, on the background and then you would stick shapes onto it and make a picture out of that. So we're kind of using the same model here where each one of those shapes is a circle or a, um, a rectangle or a line and we can put it onto this felt background. So to do that, um, we're going to use a Java library, a set of classes that someone has already written for us. They give us the building blocks that we can build these pictures out of. We're going to use one that is downloadable off the internet, and it's produced by an organization called the ACM, the Association for Computing Machinery. They are a conglomeration of academics and industry professionals who get together to do things like direct curriculum for computer science at the college level, also at the high school level. And they also do things like put on conferences about computer graphics, operating systems, artificial intelligence, um, you name it, they, they've got tons of uh, academic conferences. So at some point during your undergraduate or graduate career, you may be asked to join the ACM and I would highly encourage you to do so. But if you go and search for ACM Java, you should come across something called the ACM Java Task Force, and this is hosted at Stanford. So if you click on that one, this uh, for me, it's the second link down. You should come across this page. And if you scroll down, there's a file here called acm.jar. That's the one you want to download. So if I click on that, it's gonna download that. And then put it in my downloads folder. And then in BlueJ, you go to Preferences, Libraries, and then Add. And then you go and you find your, your Downloads folder and you find that file that was just downloaded. Now, I already downloaded the file, so I already have one here called acm.jar, um, but this is the one you want to point to. And then you click OK, and BlueJ will come up and will say, you need to restart BlueJ in order for this to take effect. So you will then quit BlueJ and restart it again, and then you will now have the ACM 
library, the graphics library built into BlueJay, so you can start taking advantage of it. So there are some basic shapes you have available to you. Let me just put in some comments here. You have a rectangle called a G rect. You have ovals called G oval, and you've got lines called a G line, and those are your basic building blocks. Those are the three, uh, three things that you get. Rectangles, ovals, and lines. Um, but also, you get something called a canvas, a G canvas, and that's what you're going to put your pictures onto. Let me spell that correctly. Canvas, like that. So that's actually the first thing that we need to put into our, our frame. So we're going to go G canvas, and we'll give it a name, like canvas. So this is a variable declaration. We're creating a variable called canvas of type G canvas. And this is our standard create an object out of a class. So G canvas, canvas equals new G canvas. And then we're gonna add this canvas to the frame. So we're gonna say this dot add canvas. And that says, that tells the J frame, take this canvas that was created and add it to yourself. All right, so now we've got this canvas and we can start drawing onto it. So let's, let's see, let's, let's make a, a basic picture. Let's do something like, well, we could do a house. That's, that's a pretty standard picture. So let me switch over to, excuse me, let me switch over to here. And let's say we want to make a house. So that would be like a, a square or a rectangle with a pointed roof like that, maybe a door and a window. And of course, later on, we'd have to add a sun to the picture. Okay, so we're going to need a rectangle for the main body of the house, a rectangle for the door, a rectangle for the window. And unfortunately, we don't have a triangle, so we're just going to make the roof out of a couple of lines. That'll be good enough. And then, of course, the sun is a circle. Actually, that's an oval. Okay, and the next thing we need to decide is where in our overall frame is this going to appear? And remember that all the shapes in Java are determined or, or centered around their top left corner. So if we want this house to be, say, um, <clears throat> let's say it's going to be 200 wide and, well, let's make it, well, we can make it square. That might work. 200 high. Okay. Um, 200 wide, 200 high. And our overall picture is 500 by 500. If we want the house to be right in the middle, well, let's say centered so that the overall thing is going to look like this, right? So we still want the house kind of low down on the ground, or low down towards the bottom of the picture. Um, this point here is 250 over from the top left corner. So that means that this point here is at 250, right? So this point over here is 100 less than that, or 150, right? So this, that's what this distance is right here. And then the distance down, again, it's, it's um, 500. If we want this maybe to appear uh, at the center point of the screen, this also would be, uh, let's see, 250 down this way. So we want our first rectangle to appear 150 over and 250 down. So let's see. Um, all right, so we'll go G rect. Let's call this um, body equals new G rect. And then you have to give it two numbers. That's the width and the height. So 200 by 200. And then we're going to tell the canvas to add the body of the house to 150 over and 250 down. Those were the coordinates that we came up with just a moment ago. Now let's click on compile and it says doesn't know about G canvas and also it's not going to know about G rect. So import 
acm dot graphics dot gcanvas and import acm dot graphics dot grect. There we go. And let's try it out. Let's see. <clears throat> Sometimes on some computers you have to resize the window just a little bit to get it to appear. And I'm not sure why that is, because you only have to do that once, and then it fixes itself. Let me show you if I compile this again. Uh, nope, it didn't work that time. All right, so to make it sometimes appear, you just got to go like that, and then it appears. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but that, that does happen. So sometimes if you just resize the window just a little bit, then you get it to appear. Um, there's another thing you can do. And that's, you can go, I think it's a canvas.validate, or excuse me, revalidate. Let's try that. There, so that, that makes it, this, this, this command here, a revalidate, forces it to draw everything on the screen, whether or not it did previously. So you, if I can digress for a moment here, what happens with Java is anytime you draw something on a screen, it's not necessarily going to do it at that exact moment. It might wait until the next time the screen refreshes. Like if you're a video game programmer, you're concerned about that. You want to make sure you only paint on the screen when it's not actively drawing on the screen. That way you can avoid what's called a tearing effect where the top part of the image is different from the bottom part of the image. So whenever you add something, uh, draw something in Java, it's kind of a request. You're saying, please draw this at some later date. And that may, t may be just a fraction of a second later. It may actually be who knows when. But if we call revalidate, we tell it, you know, please redraw everything right now and forget about waiting for a good opportunity to do so. So if we leave this at the bottom of our method, I think that we'll be fine. Okay, so we've got the body of the house here. However, we want our house to be maybe a different color. So we can say body.setColor, and then we can choose from about a dozen or so colors. Like if we do color.green, now we need to do an import to get that. It's uh, um, java.awt.color. Okay, that's the import to do to get access to the colors. And then we can say body.set filled true. And now we've got a green house. All right, so at this point, maybe we could put the roof on here. And as I said earlier, the roof is gonna be have to be made out of, out of um, lines. Let me put a comment in here. So in Java, you can put these things called comments, and they're just usually one or two brief description, one or two uh, words or one or two sentences briefly describing what the next few statements do. So if I say, draw the body of the house, that's a quick little sentence. It just says the next few statements are going to draw the body of the house. It doesn't really tell us how it's going to draw the house. It just says what it's going to do is draw the body of the house. So it's an important, it's important to, when you're writing these comments to put them in such a way that doesn't really allude to the exact steps that are going to be taken to draw the house. Rather, it's more like a bird's eye view of what's going to happen. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the roof. And that's going to be made out of two lines. So let me switch over to this picture. So here's our, here's our first line, and here's our second line. Uh, we, know where, we know where this point is, this lower left-hand point. That's at 150, 250, like that. And this point over here is 150 plus 200, so that's 350, 250. And then this apex point, we know that's at the midway point here, so that's 250. And then we have to decide how high our roof is going to be. Let's say the roof is 100 high. So that would be 250, 150, which we know is the distance from the top left corner down to 250, midway here, 250, 
and then we subtract the 100 to get up to this point here. So we're going to need a line that goes from this point to this point, and then a line that goes from this point to this point. All right, so let's do that. <clears throat> so draw the roof. This is called a G line. And you have to give it four pieces of information. The XY coordinate of one endpoint and the XY coordinate of the other endpoint. And it doesn't matter which ones you do first. It can draw the line in, in either direction. So you can start from left to right or right to left. It doesn't matter. So we're going to do 150, 250, and 250, 150. So if I bring this up again, that was 150, 250, and 250, 150. And then we're going to add it. Oh, whoops, this is not right. G line, let's call this left roof equals new G line. There we go. That's what I wanted. And let's add left roof. And in this case, when we're adding it to the canvas, we don't have to tell it where it's going because we've already specified that with these four coordinates here. So we can just say, just add the left roof to the canvas. And then let's do another line, line called the right roof. And that one goes from 350, 250 to 250, 150. Two fifty, one fifty, and then we'll add that. And doesn't know what G line is, so we'll import that. And I misspelled line there. It's capital L. There we go. And there's our house. So it's got a thin black roof sitting on top of it. And there's the green body of it. All right. Now, you may be wondering, since I am importing three separate classes from the same graphics package, is it possible to just kind of import everything? And yes, it is. You could just put a star here and it will import everything from the acm.graphics package. Now, what you can't do is import star, right? That, that just doesn't work. It only works kind of on a, on a package by package basis. So you can do acm.graphics and then a star, or you can do, you can't do acm.star, that doesn't work, okay? So it's gotta be uh, um, as deep in the packages as you can go, and then you can do a star to get all the classes within that package. And actually, when you do this import, you're, you're going to get a few other things as well. There's some other shapes that are part of the library. No, triangles are not one of them, but there are some other shapes in there. But for now, we're just using ovals, lines, and rectangles. All right, next, we're going to put the door in. So let's switch back to our drawing. Where's our door going to go? So maybe the door uh, has its right edge right on the middle. So we know that that is 250 over. But how wide is the door? Maybe the door is just, so we know the whole thing is 200. Maybe the door is 60 wide, which means this is 190. And then the distance down is, um, well, let's see, how tall is the door? Let's say the door is 100 tall. Um, if we know it's 100 tall, that's half, half the height of the overall house. So it's going to be 250 plus 100, 350. That's the top left corner, 190, 350. So let's switch back to here and we'll say door. G rect door equals new G rect. And we said it was going to be 60 wide and 100 tall. And we're going to add it at 190. Sorry, add the door at 190, 350. 
and let's see what we've got. All right, there's our door. It probably should be white so that it actually looks like, like kind of like a door. So for that, we're going to say door dot set color color dot white and door dot set filled true. And there's our door. Okay, next, our window. Let's have the top edge of the window be at the same height as the door. So we know that is 350 down and it's gonna be a little bit over from the midline, maybe just 30 pixels or so. So we'll go to 280 here, 280, 350. And then we'll make the window be maybe 50 by 50 or so. And we'll see how see what the hell that works. G rect window equals new G rect fifty by fifty. And canvas dot add window at two fifty three fifty. And let's make the window blue and the window uh, filled of course that filled true oops okay that wasn't quite right um, we need to slide the window over a little bit so we have to add about 30 pixels to its x location There, that's what we want. Kind of looking like a house. Standard, got a door and a window. If we were really detail oriented, we might put a little tiny circle right here for the doorknob, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, at this point, you might be thinking, well, the, the windows are not really blue. Real windows aren't blue. They're kind of like a really, really light blue instead of a dark blue. And there is no predefined light blue color that we can use. So what we have to do is make our own colors. Now, you may have learned in another course that colors on a computer system are made up of red, green, and blue values. And we can build a custom color by just supplying our own RGB, red, green, and blue values. Each one of the values can be from zero to 255. Zero is dark and 255 is maximum saturation. So the easiest way to do, I think, is just to do a search for something like RGB color picker, that might work. And then find a color that you like. Here's actually, this is one that was left over from a previous demonstration I did. If we don't like that color, we can pick a new one. Like maybe if we go this way, that's kind of gray. Here's one, I like this. 183, 234, 237. So I'm going to write that down. 183, 234, 237. That's my light blue color. So to do that, we're going to make our own color. We'll say color light blue equals new color, and then give it those two val three values, 183, 234, 237. There's our light blue color. And then when we set the color, instead of using color.blue, which is a, a predefined color, we're gonna use ours, light blue. And that's what we get. Looks pretty good. We could do the same thing for the door. We could maybe find a different color for the door. Um, how about something like that? 196, 35, 94. I'm looking at these colors here. I'm gonna write that down. 
This is kind of a, I would just maybe a, a well, let's call it door color. I don't, I don't really know what color that is. Door color, that is 196, 35, 94. Uh, let's put that in there. Actually, we could maybe do that here. Oh, we got a door color would have to be up here. So color, door color equals new color 196, 35, 94. And we'll replace the color here. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't switch over the, the, the screen. You didn't see what I wrote. I apologize for that. So here's what I wrote. I wrote in door color right here. And then I changed the set color here to door color. And then I drew the picture. That's how it came out. So one important thing, and you probably realize this already, is that when you define a new variable like this, you have to define it before you use it. I initially was thinking, maybe I can group all of my custom colors together down here, but that wouldn't work because I would be defining what door color is before, actually, excuse me, after I used it. A better thing to do if I want to group all the colors together is to cut that out and maybe put it like up here. And we'll say custom colors. And now my two colors are up there, up front, and then I can use them throughout my program. Let's just make sure it all works. Great. So I got my house. So the last thing is to add a sun up here. And the sun being a circle is made up out of a, uh, an oval actually. So all we get are ovals and we, the oval to make a circle is just gonna be uh, same width and height. So here's our sun. Let's say the Total dimensions are 100, so 100 wide. And circles are also positioned on the screen relative to their top left corner, which is up here. And let's put this maybe at uh, 50 over and how about 100 down? So 50, 100. And the whole circle is going to be 100 wide. So that's a G oval. Sun equals new G oval. 100 by 100. Let's set the color to yellow. And set filled to true. And then canvas.add the sun at 50 by 100. Oh, that came out bigger than I thought. Um, maybe this should just be 50 by 50. There we go. That's more like it. And again, if we were more detail-oriented, we would put, put a whole bunch of lines representing the rays, but I'm not going to do that. That's, that's a lot of trouble. Uh, if we wanted to draw something like a tree over here, um, we could probably do some kind of like a, a stick. Actually, let's go ahead and put a tree in there. I think that's a good idea. Tree. That would be a rectangle for the trunk. Let's make it really skinny. So it's only going to be like 10 pixels wide and maybe uh, 150 tall. And 
And I think we have a brown. I hope we do. Make it make it filled and then we're going to add it to our picture and let's, let's switch over to our diagram. So our trunk is going to go here. So that's going to be about uh, maybe maybe 70 over and since the whole thing is 150 tall it needs to be 250 plus 50 300 down trunk 70 comma 350 Oh, we don't have a brown. All right. So color brown equals new color. And let's go bring up our color picker and let's go find brown. Not sure where that is. Let's see. It's probably in the reds, but it's kind of like down here. That's probably pretty good. 105, 74, 78. I'm just writing it down. 105, 74, 78. 105, 74, 78. And we're using our brown, not the built-in one. Whoops, uh, didn't do something right there. Did I, did I not type that 350 down? Is that right? Oh, it should be 300. Yeah, my, my notes say 300. I, I just didn't, didn't put it in correctly. Didn't type it in correctly. There we go. So there's our tree trunk. And then for the, uh, the leaves, we could just do a bunch of green circles just kind of scattered around. I'm just going to stick one of them on there. And it'll look like, a lo look like a lollipop, but it'll be good enough. So we'll go G-Rect leaves equals new G-Rect. Let's do this. Actually, let's let's actually make an oval. So it's going to be like... 100 by 75, so 100 wide, 75 tall. And then leaves dot set color, color dot green, and leaves dot set filled true, and then canvas dot add. Um, let's see, I said it's going to be 100 wide, so. Um, 50, let's see, let's look at my picture again. So basically we're going to put it right here like that. <clears throat> so it's a hundred wide. This trunk is, what did I say? Is it, it's 10 wide. So the midline here, it's, um, so actually there's kind of like two midlines. That's the trunk there. So this is, it's, it's 45 to this one and 45 to that one. So, cause I know that I know where this one is. So this is 70 minus 45, which is 30, 25. Sorry, this is 25. And then the height down, I'm just going to guess at that. I'm going to say it's 270. Something like that. 25, 270. I, I think that's going to come out right. Leaves, 25, 270. Oh, <laughs> okay. I did not mean to make that a rectangle. I meant to make that an oval. There we go. There's our lollipop. Oh, sorry, you can't see. There we go. There's our lolly. <laughs> so you, what you did not see, 
thankfully, on is that I had initially made this a rectangle. I'll show you just for the effect here. This is what I had originally. So I was thinking oval in my head, but I think I typed rectangle. And it came out like that. <laughs> Square tree. So I actually meant to go oval. Oval. There. Lollipop tree. Um, maybe we want this to be a dark round, dark green instead of a light green. So again, we'll go back to our color picker. Swing down to the green area. Pull in a dark, dark green like that one. 30, let's, let's write that down. 36. Dark green. 36, 138, 60. Put that in our colors here. Color, dark green equals new color, 36, 138, 60. Dark green. There, I like that. There's our picture. All right, so at this point, our method, our procedure for drawing the picture is getting a little long. And there's a rule of thumb when you're programming that if you're, any procedure, any method that you write gets longer than about a screen full. So a longer, longer than you can kind of glance all at once, then you wanna chop it up into smaller pieces. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take so, so look, you can see here that it's broken up into small pieces. We have definition of cu custom colors, then drawing the body of the house, drawing the roof, drawing the door, drawing the window. So everything from here to up here is everything having to do with drawing the house. And the sun kind of stands on its own. But the tree is broken up into two pieces. There's drawing the trunk of the tree and then drawing the leaves. So that's also got two pieces. So what we're gonna do is separate out those pieces so that drawing a picture is gonna consist of just instructions to draw the individual, or uh, draw the larger shapes. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's take everything has to do with drawing the house, which is all this stuff here. And I'm gonna cut that out. And then down here, I'm going to make a new procedure. Let's call it draw house. And I'm going to paste into there everything that I just cut out. See that? So here's all the instructions for drawing the house. And it's still a bit longer than a screen full, so we're going to break it down a bit more. But for now, this is OK. And then where I cut that out, I'm just going to call this dot draw house. So I'm going to replace all of the instructions, all of the statements that have to do with drawing the house, and we're going to put those into their own method and then just call that method from my setup. See that? So if we compile this, we're going to get some errors. And the first error we're going to get is down here in draw house, it's going to say, can't find symbol variable canvas. So what BlueJ is telling us, or what the compiler is telling us, is that we're making reference to a variable called canvas inside of draw house that doesn't exist, it doesn't know about. And this is where BlueJ's color coding comes in really handy. You see there's a yellow box around draw house. Any variables that are declared or used within this yellow box excuse me, any variables that are used within this yellow box must be declared within the yellow box. That, actually, that's not correct either. Let me back up a bit. Let me tell you what's going on. <laughs> the compiler says, I'm, you're using a variable here called canvas. And so it's gonna look inside of the nearest enclosing braces, which are defined by the yellow box. And it's gonna look for a definition for that variable. So it's gonna look through here and look for somewhere where you're saying what type of thing canvas is and what its value is. 
and it doesn't see it anywhere in its yellow box. We know that the definition for canvas is actually up in the setup yellow box. Here's the definition right here. Okay, so the compiler looks in this yellow box and doesn't see the definition of canvas. So then what it does is it expands its search. It goes to the next enclosing box, which is the green box. And it looks through the green box and it doesn't see a definition for canvas. The definition of canvas is actually hidden inside this smaller yellow box, but its search does not include that other box. So it starts within the nearest enclosing braces, and then it expands outward, and it expands outward, and expands outward until it finally runs out of braces. And that's when it says, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't find this symbol, this variable called canvas. So it, it expands outward. What it doesn't do is shift up and down and look through other other boxes that are at the same level. It, it just expands outward like ripples on a, on a lake. So that should give you a clue about what we need to do. We need to help it out by moving the declaration of canvas out of that yellow box for setup and into the green box so that the compiler can find it. So here's that declaration. We're going to put it up here in the green box. Okay. And then this is very important. We're going to take out this declaration by removing the type, the G canvas in front of canvas. So now we're giving it its value inside of the yellow box, but we're declaring it, telling it about its existence in the green box. So the compiler is going to follow the same ex expansion process. Even when it gets to this here, it's going to say, okay, you're assigning to a variable called canvas. I need to find a declaration for it. I don't see it in this yellow box. So I'm going to expand my search and look in the green box and go, ah, there it is. There's the, the declaration for that variable. Now I know what its type is. And then it can make the assignment correctly. If we had left in G canvas here, then a kind of a little weird thing happens. The compiler again says, okay, you got a variable called canvas. I need to assign its value. What's its type? Where's the declaration for it? Ah, it's right here. Here's, here's a declaration for it. It's, it's, a, it's a G canvas. So what we end up with is two variables, two separate independent variables, both called canvas, but within different boxes. As long as variables are declared within different boxes, it's okay. You can do that. But just be aware that those are two separate variables that happen to have the same name. Okay, so if you try to compile this, we got, a, we got a different issue of door color. Um, but notice there's no complaint now about what Canvas is. You try to compile this, it'll work fine. It'll say, okay, here's Canvas. I know its type, G Canvas. I can give it its value. That's fine. We can then use that Canvas to add the sun and add the tree and so forth. And then when it comes down here, it's going to say, okay, you're trying to use a variable called Canvas. Let me find the declaration for that. And it's going to expand its search out to the green box. And it's going to find that one up here. So remember, that's a different one than was found here. And this one, it so happens, doesn't have a value, right? Nowhere in the green box or in the lower yellow box do we give it a value. So, the so when we run the program, it's going to crash. It's going to say, um, here, I know, I know what can it's going to compile, but it's going to say canvas doesn't have a value. It's going to generate this odd thing called a null pointer exception. And we'll explain much later what that is, but basically the program's going to crash. All right, so when you move a declaration for a variable, for this particular instance, when you move that from the yellow box to the green box, you also need to remove its type there to make sure that everything is pointing back to that G canvas that's up at the top of, of the class. Okay, so next issue here is the colors, right? So. The, the draw house here says, I don't know what door color is. Um, so we could do the same thing. Well, it's doing the same thing. It's, it's starting its search in the yellow box and expanding out to the green box, and it's not finding a definition for door color. Remember, we've got them all up here in this custom colors section. Um, so what I would suggest for now is, since the only thing that needs to use door color is the, the door, that I would move this definition down into draw house here colors for the house 
Okay, and there's gonna be, there's another one. There's like a door color, and there's the, the window color, the light blue. So that's this one here. Get rid of that, move it down here. <clears throat> and now that's okay. So the colors needed for drawing the house are in the draw house method, and the colors needed for drawing the tree are in the in the setup method. So just to recap what we did, we took all the statements for drawing the house and we moved them, sorry, moved them into a new method called draw house along with all the colors needed for drawing the house. Then we had to move the declaration for canvas out of the setup box and into the green box. And we also, and by doing so, we also had to take away the type sitting in front of canvas to make sure that we're referring to this one and not and not the 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 one that's within the the yellow box, the setup yellow box. Okay, so now let's do the same thing for the tree. So here's the tree. I'm going to cut this out. Let's make a new method called draw tree. Okay, and we're going to need the colors for it. We used, let's see, where was it? We used dark green and brown. And here, these are the tree colors. And then here we'll say this dot draw tree. Okay, same process we did before. Compile it, run it. Okay, same picture. And now let's let's complete this. Let's do the same thing for the sun. Void draw sun. Okay, and we don't. There's no custom colors here. We're just using the built-in yellow. And then up here, we'll say this dot draw. Sun and let me clean it up a little bit getting rid of these extra blank lines Great Okay, so notice what we've done here is now set up let's get rid of this Setup now nicely fits on one screen Setup says, set the size of the window, make it visible, set the title, add the canvas, and then draw the house, draw the sun, draw the tree. And that's it. And if we wanted to dig down and find out how to actually draw the sun and draw the tree and draw the house, we could do so. We could scroll down and find the instructions for those. Um, draw tree fits nicely on a screen, draw sun fits nicely on a screen, but draw house is still a bit long. So, we could take, let's see, we could, we could do the same thing, right? All the windows and the doors and the roof and the body, we could all make uh, methods for those. Let's try it. Let's do it on a couple of them. Void, draw, roof. Let's do that one, which is these four. And then we say this dot draw roof. Sorry, <laughs> roof, draw, this I'll draw roof. Okay. And maybe we could do the same thing for door. Draw door. And this one uses door color. So let's bring, let's bring door color down into draw door. This dot draw door. Okay, and we could we could continue with that. But look, here's here's something that is interesting is our setup says draw house. Draw house says define light blue. 
draw the body, and then draw roof, draw door, and then window. Okay, so we're, we're, what we're doing is we're breaking down what we call the problem, the problem of drawing this picture, into smaller and smaller pieces. We, we took the problem and broke it down into draw house, draw sun, and draw tree. And then draw house was broken down further into draw the roof, draw the door, and draw the other stuff, the body and the window. And then draw roof is actually the individual instructions for drawing the roof. And we could break that down even further and do the left roof and the right roof into their own, into their own methods. So the idea here is to um, modularize, actually the proper word term here is decomposition. We're taking a, a large problem and decomposing it into smaller and smaller pieces. Let me write down that word for you. Actually, let me, I'll just put it, um, let's see, mm -hmm. there we go. So decomposition. So break down a problem into smaller and smaller pieces. I before E, yeah, is that right? I before E, okay. Um, there's also another term which is abstraction, which is to hide unimportant details. Okay, we're using abstraction here by taking this idea of drawing a picture, and instead of including all the individual instructions, we abstract away the idea of drawing a house. It's if, For the purposes of, of explaining how the picture is drawn, it's not important how the, draw, the house is drawn, just the fact that it is drawn. Same thing for the sun and same thing for the tree. It's not important, not, in, uh, not important here to know how it's drawn, just that there is a sun and there is a tree. And then if we wanted to go and find out about how to draw the sun and how to draw the tree, we, we could go down and scroll down and find that out. But we're abstracting away that information because it's not important at the time that we're calling the methods. So that's, that's abstraction. We do that all the time in computer programming. Anytime you make a method or a procedure or a function, you're essentially hiding away the details of how that function or how that procedure actually works step by step and just referring to it by its name. Okay, so I think that's, that's pretty much what we wanted to do here. Uh, we've got our picture. I've showed you how to make custom colors. I've showed you how to decompose or break down the problem into smaller pieces by making procedures that are smaller and smaller. You want to kind of aim for fitting on a screen or so. So we're looking at a procedure no longer than about 25 lines or so. There's no hard and fast rule here. And of course, the the size of your screen is gonna kind of dictate a little bit about how long, how much you can fit on a screen. But remember that computer programs are also gonna be viewed by other people who may not have screens quite as big as yours. You know, I can just hear now that someone says like, well, I've got a 35 inch screen and I have it vertically on my desk. So I've got a good, a good 30 inches of space that I can type things in and I make everything really small. I use six point type. So everything fits on a screen. But that's, that's not keeping in kind of the spirit of this guideline, which is make sure that no matter what size screen another person has, it's going to roughly fit on there. It's also good for scannability. So you're looking at how much you as a human can kind of fit within your range of vision. And it's only going to be, you know, about this much space, really. So even if you have a super tall monitor, you can't really see all of it at once with your eyes. You're going you're to have to scan up and down. So you want to kind of fit within that that range. Um, so I think, I think that's what um, we want to cover. I haven't seen anyone on the chat yet asking any questions, so I'll wait for a few seconds to see if anyone does ask a question, and if not, uh, we'll leave it at that. Okay, well, I don't see anything, so I hope to see all of you at class, and have a good evening. Bye-bye.